what's up guys welcome back to my channel where today we're going to be discussing the boxing action and ufc action from this past week so this past week has been an incredible week for all of fight sports and some of build itself has been one of the greatest weeks in fight sports in recent times which i completely agree with since we've had two two i say super fights in the world of boxing in a single week last year we may have been lucky to get two in a year and of course we had a brilliant ufc pay-per-view that delivered like always so we'll start off with the boxing and go all the way back to last tuesday morning in japan where stephen fulton defended his super bantamweight world titles against naoya anue who was going who was attempting to win his fourth world title his fourth weight division world title so that fight build as the monster being the big puncher as with Fulton being the better technician and boxer however th that did not occur as Inoue completely showed he was the better boxer in fact and had the power to sting Fulton and make him stay on the back foot and retreat most of the fight and be scared to go in and uh punch with Inoue basically which resulted in Inoue winning all but one round I'd say in the fight until the he dropped Fulton in the eighth and then the ref finally stopped it so yeah incredible performance by Inoue proved himself to be on Tuesday morning put himself as the pound for pound number one and in my opinion overtook Usyk and was pound for pound number one on Tuesday morning and proved it won a world title in his fourth weight division and his power transcends these weight divisions and he's still got it. And the conversations after this fight is how many weight divisions can he win world titles in? Because after the fight, um, they got the poor of a um, super bantamweight champion who did not look like he wanted to be anywhere near a new way after that performance. And rightly so into potentially set up the undisputed kind of, uh, a two-way undisputed uh, world champion. Uh, but is there any need for that fight? Maybe if they do it in the next couple of months, a quick turnaround, undisputed, because Inoue should win that easily, undisputed, and then we're looking even further. Featherweight, super featherweight, lightweight, get him in with all the huge names. There's huge fights to make for a new end, who knows, even further, could be Pacquiao-esque, apart from Inoue is 30, his body's not going to grow that much, but who knows how much he wants to uh, improve his legacy even further and show how truly one of the all-time greats he is. So yeah, looking forward, Inoue, there's plenty of fights out there, obviously they look like they're going the, uh, towards the road of Undisputed, then after that, look up at featherweight there was obviously Rob Z Ramirez on the undercard uh retained his featherweight world title that should be an easy fight to make and one where Anui would go in favorite who knows if he wants to unify that division or just keep keep going through the weight divisions then who knows being selfish over here seeing him with Joe Cordina get Anui over to the UK get a massive super fight in Cardiff Cordina Anui would do incredible numbers and then who knows, there's been plenty of talk, maybe rightly or wrongly, again, as him to fight Tank Davis, you know. Obviously, Tank Davis is a lightweight, but a smaller one at that. So it could be plenty of potential to make what probably would be the biggest fight in world boxing, I'd say. Tank Davis, huge superstar in America, as proven by the numbers that the fight of Ryan Garcia did. And Inoue, the biggest fighter out of Japan and um the East, yeah. So yeah, that was the first super fight. Afterwards, Inoue, pound for pound, number one. However, Saturday, another super fight. Errol Spence Jr. against Terence Crawford for the undisputed welterweight world title. And which was also billed as the winner, probably if they did it in spectacular fashion, going up to number one, pound for pound, just ahead of Inoue, as the list is fluid as it should always be. And one of them did exactly that. Terence Crawford. Oh my God. That was one of the most incredible one-sided performances I've ever seen. His skill was just 
that we've seen just counter punch in so much quicker than Errol Spence could get his first punch in. He just took Errol Spence to school. School, uh, Errol Spence just got beaten up for nine rounds in the end. Got knocked down three or four times. Got knocked down early as well and bloodied nose from at least like the second, third round. Just torn apart by Terence Crawford and oh my God, deservedly the new pound for pound number one is Terence Crawford because a display like that, and rightly so, everyone is talking about it all over social media. They're talking about where does Terence Crawford rank it with the all-time greats? And he's still fighting at 35 and there's plenty more to come. And I want to watch every single fight he does from now on because if he performs at that level, wow, there could be some huge fights in the future. Obviously, this was billed as a huge fight, but it was one-sided. So maybe all his fights are going to be one-sided because he is really, truly that impressive and good. But El Spence, you know, there was a rematch clause, uh, which... I believe has been activated already. Obviously, Errol Spence lost his three of his belts. But I don't really want to see a rematch because I believe it'll be as one-sided as that was. And I don't think you need to see Spence get beaten down like that uh, again. People are saying Errol Spence looked drained at the weight. Maybe he did, but even if they do it up at... Um, super well to wait now as um I believe Spence wanted to and Crawford was happy to do that. Even with the extra weight I still think nothing will change. Just Crawford may carry a bit more power um with the extra weight behind him, you know? But yeah, I don't particularly want to see the rematch. I don't think it's needed. I think that was so decisive that we don't need it. And we want to see Terence Crawford, you know, either defend these undisputed belts against Boots Ennis is a uh, is um number one mandatory, I believe. I'm not sure if mandatory just yet, or maybe called soon. Or obviously when he won, he jumped on the ropes, called out um Jamel Charlo, who was sat uh, a few rows back in his bright red jacket, as many of you may have seen. That would be an incredible fight, honestly. And one I think maybe Jamel would take. Obviously, he's scheduled for the Canelo fight, which huge paid anyway. Not sure he's going to win that. So, huge payday, Canelo fight, all the eyes on you. Come back down to your where you're undisputed champion and the Terence Crawford fight makes you even more money as well after that Crawford performance as well. Say he Jamal Charlo puts in a respectable performance against Canelo, people want to see him at his actual weight. And why not chuck Crawford in there for undisputed against undisputed again? And it's a super fight which will do impressive numbers again after Crawford's performance in this especially. So yeah, that's one avenue for Crawford to go, but I'm expecting the rematch and Crawford to win and maybe get him out of there a bit quicker now he knows what he's facing or lack of what he's facing. So yeah, that was the boxing action from this week. And now let's head over to also on Saturday night, the UFC. It was Dustin Poirier against Justin Gaethje for the BMF belt, which, in other terms, is a number one uh, contender match for the lightweight belt. And, wow, what a fight. What a sh shock. Fit TKO, many expected it to go to points or just a late knockout even. Not sure anyone expected Justin Gaethje by a head kick knockout. Wow. It was what a what kick. What a what well, performance by uh, Justin Gaethje, sorry. Yeah, took out Poirier with what, well, as a result says, with ease. Uh, second round head kick KO. Just what a performance. And it puts uh, Justin Gaethje arguably next for a title shot at lightweight. However, I'm not sure how soon that will come. Obviously, we've got... Um, Makachev against Charles Oliveira scheduled the second fight scheduled for Abu Dhabi. Depending on the outcome of that, say Oliveira wins, I believe Makachev get should get an instant rematch. So then that's uh Justin waiting even longer for a fight. And there's also still Volkanovsky wants to come back and challenge for the belt again. And that's a potential other fight. If 
Makachev wins, maybe the Volk fight's next. If Charles wins, it's the Makachev rematch. So I think he's still going to be waiting an extra, who knows, six, seven, eight months, Gaethje, for even the chance of a world title fight. So I believe he should have another fight in the meantime, maybe sadly for him, or maybe it, just keep the rust off and make sure he's 100% ready this time for a, the title shot. And who could that be? Obviously, he's just cleaned out uh, Poirier. There's not many other contenders at lightweight at the minute. They've all seemed to lost. Obviously, Darius lost to Oliveira, and there's just a... I'm not sure Gaethje needs to fight any of the young newcomers coming through. Obviously, he took out Fazeev in his last fight, who's ranked six still, I believe. So there's no one in the top five that he needs to fight, really. So interesting to see where he goes. But the one fight, I have an idea of what I would like to see. Uh, selfishly, maybe. However, he's now holding the BMF belt. There's been talks of uh, why not a certain... Max Holloway clears out everyone at uh, featherweight. Why does Max not go back up to lightweight? Is a BMF himself. Gaethje, Holloway, BMF belt. That'd be an incredible fight. Be stand and bang stuff like what we expected Poirier and Gaethje to be. Might get an early knockout, might go the distance. It'd be a war, whatever. That's a fight I'd like to see. And then obviously the co-main was Jan Blahovic against Alex Poeja, who's just come off a loss to Izzy at middleweight for the title. And uh, Poeja won on a split decision against Jan Blahovic, which may have been a surprise to some or not to others. But yeah, that's incredible stuff from Poeja. Obviously, lost to Izzy in his last fight. But when Izzy went up to fight for the light heavyweight title, Blahovic handled him with ease. And Poeja showed his skill and... His size, he looked he looked the bigger man by far. And he, who knows how he did middleweight because he looked enormous in there against Blahovic, a career like heavyweight. And yeah, that puts prayer in for the next title shot. Obviously, um, Jamahal Hill's vacated uh, for injury and Jerry perhaps because uh, back from his injury after he vacated. So I'm pretty sure this should make uh, perhaps go against Pereira for the like heavyweight belt uh, sometime later this year and that would be an incredible fight. Yuri coming back after his uh, long layoff with injury and Pereira going for two-weight world champion. And obviously that could lead to, if Pereira somehow wins, obviously the trilogy with Izzy, who would go for a two-weight world champion himself for a second time. But yeah, that's plenty to look forward to in the future. Obviously, some big fights out there in the world of boxing to make now after these two incredible performances as well. It's the UFC, which always make incredible fights anyway. So there's no need to worry about that. So yeah, that's it all from today and the past week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe and I will see you all next time. Peace.